I would love if the acting side of my of this career was maybe up a bit higher, of a higher standard, more in keeping with the the, the uh, musical side. But it's getting there. It's just a different discipline, and it's a, I know a lot of it is a question of confidence as well. Uh, you, you really get involved in the in the whole thing, and it's you're not there on your own. It's very much teamwork, and and I always feel very comfortable on stage doing um, opera work. Terrific. The other thing is, um, just when you do your, when he's come for the first scene, when he first grabs you, guarda un po', you've got to make it clear. Look here. Look at this. That's what I want you to look at. Yeah, not anything else. darling it's lovely and could you immediately he says that can you think oh thank you know sort of turn away and enjoy it model it a bit do you know what I mean and then as 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 he's coming a across, lot of when you singers look back to him, he's not looking at your imagine hand. that just, to sing Mozart is easy many of the arias are quite a small range compared with Puccini and Verdi and so on and they are not so obviously emotionally or technically demanding. If the range and the volume are both moderately small, a young singer feels that she can cope with them. For instance, uh, Susanna's aria De Vieni only goes to a top A and mainly down to a C with this touching of B-flat A. But it's extremely difficult to make a beautiful legato in that aria, not to have high notes sticking out and bumping, but perhaps even more difficult is the recitative. Even if the opera is being sung in an English translation, the speed of the recitative is very fast. And when it has to be done in fluent Italian, that adds a lot of problems to the average singer. you become part of a team. Up to now that's the way I feel I've become part of a team. You have to be a bit bigger than what you normally are in order to project because you're projecting a character rather than just you know the music and the sound. Susanna.
Susanna's part grows, I think, so much throughout the opera. And of course, she does have really a great deal more to do than the Countess. And she has to be a consummate actress in her dealings with the Count, and then keeping Figaro happy and with Marcellina different again. So I think the whole opera really does tend to hang on the character of Susanna, and therefore it is a very, very important part. And I think Regina is extremely lucky that Glyndebourne has picked her. Part of it is very pretty, it's but, it's can't, beautiful. but we can't yes. move. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't know, it's, it's much better than the last time, I have to say. Mm. Good. But it's, if I could just not feel that at all. Mm. It's not, I mean, you, it's not a t-shirt. You see, that you have... No, no, I, I am considering that. You I see, am. otherwise, if you're not careful, your boobs will start to fall out. Yes. I think there are so many ways in which she can show different facets of the character. She can have great depth towards the end of the opera when the poor Countess is really distraught at the idea that she should have to sink to changing her clothes and, and making use of, of her maid, however fond she is of the young girl, to, to play this deception upon a husband. I read somewhere, you know, that you have the written page, you have these words, you have a sentence, and then you have the eyes reading it. And the interpretation comes somewhere between the eyes and the written word. And I always think music is that in-between world, between the eyes and the written world. It's something people recognize. They may not always be able to understand it, depending on whatever level of awareness we are all at. But it's extremely important to our life and living. It's very, if we leave ourselves open to hearing it or feeling it, we will. grateful to them and grateful to the whole of the Ballymahin um, community of nuns because uh, 
with all the work they put in and all the um, knowledge they tried to give us, whether it was up to us whether we took it or not, there came an awful lot of uh, care and genuine, sincere kind of loving as well. And uh, because I learned piano with them. I learned a lot of um, musical appreciation. I always remember the first time Sister Maura played um, Tiny Little Music Room and she put on uh, the, um, the Pilgrim's Chorus, the three trombones and oh gosh, I remember going in there after class and just putting that up full blast and just listening to this music, you know, and learning all about the form and how to listen, following the score. It all kind of started here, you know.